16 of my knitting podcast. Um, it's been a while. Um, I mean, it's not been that long, but it feels like it's been a while. I think it's been three weeks since I last uploaded and about a month since I last filmed. So my, the things I brought to you, uh, the things I brought to talk to you about today are a lot. Um, I've not been uh, super well in the last week. I've had a summer flu, uh, which I, I don't know, for some reason I had this exact same thing last year when I was in New York at a conference and had like a three week work trip and in the last uh, week when I actually had some days off to explore the city, I got really sick, um, had fever and like coughing and um, throat aching really badly. I'm a lot better now, but I'm still coughing a lot. So if that is the case, you might see a couple more cuts here and there. I'm trying to, um, yeah, keep it short and sweet and simple. That's a lie, it's probably not gonna be short, but I like to keep it simple uh, these days. I'm not trying to edit so much. I hope you enjoy the format like that. And I've missed talking, for some reason, I missed talking to my phone because I know that there are people, actual people watching, which I love the idea of and um, commenting back to me and then me being able to talk to them. So I, I don't know, I just wanted to share a bit of an appreciation moment for the online knitting community, which um, I'm so happy to be a part of. And um, for so many of you um, who keep coming back to watch these videos because I really enjoy making them. And um, yeah, so I'm trying to take it real slow today. <clears throat> just so my voice doesn't break at some point. And I'm going to start off this video by showing you or sharing with you about what I'm wearing. Uh, this was my latest finished test knit. Um, I know so many of you have still kept on commenting about that over dyeing process and um, tried to help me, which I very much appreciate. Um, at that point though, it was too late. And I've already, I had already done the over dyeing with the not correct dye, but more on that later. So the Ambria Summer Top is by Cookie the Knitter. Uh, her name is Jimin, and uh, she had already released this pattern earlier, but she wanted to get it tested again to ex extend her size range. And so I knitted size large, um, but she, that was a size she had already published before, but she wanted to make some tweaks with it. So uh, the newer pattern, I don't know what it included, which wasn't there before, maybe the short rows. Um, but yeah, I've knitted this in Knitting for Olive, pure silk. I feel like so many people have so many opinions about this yarn and I totally get it because I think it's beautiful. Like I think finished objects that are knitted with this, uh, with this, uh, it's not wool, with this fiber, um, look beautiful, but it wasn't the most enjoyable to work with. It wasn't bad, but the thing that was a bit bad was the dye lot differences. I know I've talked about this and I really hope it didn't come up, come across as me being like, I don't know, a very negative person um, and I know it's my mistake like I did buy two different dye lots and there was about a year in between the two purchases or like a bit more than half a year I'm like I'm not sure about the timeline anymore but um, the one that I had it was in a, in a crate which where I keep maybe if you saw my like stash video you see how I stash my yarn so it might have been a bit like it lightened by the sun that is a possibility but also it did throughout the whole skein so it, it wasn't just like the, the outside and those skeins were so gray like the the ones that I got later both of them were supposed to be powder and the one was more of like a pinkish like warm powdery color 
and then the one that I had in stash that I bought yet last year, which is really, really great. And I know so many of you also said that they didn't think it was a bad, like a big deal. It still looked nice, the like striping. I changed, like I interchanged the, the hangs to, um, in case it was going to be very visible, which it was, um, the dialogue differences. And so I did that on purpose just because I thought that's a better look than like just having two parts of the garment. And the reason why I just didn't like that was because the grayish color was, and with the like pinkish other powdery tone, it just, I just didn't like the colors, right? Um, and so I would have preferred the garments to be in the second uh, dye lot that I got all over. And so that's what I try to achieve with over dyeing it. So I know this is, it's like just speaking about what I'm wearing is going to take such a long time. So please bear with. Um, I just wanted to share about the things that I think I did wrong and then also maybe give you guys some adv advice if you're like ever in the same situation because I actually heard from quite a lot of people that this is not just a me problem but that other people have had this problem with the pure silk in the um, past and that knitting for olive and I don't even want to say it because I know there are so many people out there who love knitting for olive and like I'm one of them I like their yarn but a couple of people have said that the quality control and the consistency of the colors along the dye lots isn't the best like I'm not trying to stir the pot or like speak shit about anyone or any brand or like I don't know come off as negative but it's just I think we should talk about those things like we're always raving about the yarns that we love and I'm just saying pure silk in the future I wouldn't ever com like combine two dye lots with this particular lock yarn and I've I know that's a thing like I know I should have been like more careful but in the future, just for me, I would always just wait to get that yarn if I know that I want to make I make a particular project with it and then get the exact amount of skeins that I need. But yada yada. <laughs> I did use um, this textile fiber, which is by the brand Simply Cool. And um, the color that I wanted to use was the called Safari Khaki um, and this is a dye that you use in the washing machine um, and there are two sachets in there that you like cut open or screw screw open and then put it in there with the fabric. I did put two other things in there. I put an old towel and a scarf that I had. It's a muslin scarf that I love. I got a set of three scarves um, from my boy boyfriend like three, two, three birthdays ago. And I loved them. But the one that I put into the washing uh, machine as well was kind of like a very yellowy beige, which I think because I'm like such a pale uh, and blonde person, the yellowish beige just washed me out because I had it like all around my face when I draped it around my neck. So I thought that would be nice to get a bit more, I don't know, more maybe khaki color. In the end, it turned out terracotta-esque kind of. I can insert a picture, um, but I like that as well. So I put in those two other things just because the package said that one package permanently colors 600 grams of fabric in full color. And I should have been wary when I read that this color is particularly well suited to dye cotton with and a couple of other fibers like viscose and stuff. I think, like, don't take my word for it. Obviously, I'm not good at this. But what I didn't know is that this brand actually has a silk dyeing kit as well. And so many people tried to tell me, but this was also such a spur of the moment I want to do it now like I finished knitting it it was a quite intense knitting project just because 
there were some techniques I had never done before. It was just my second kind of like cardigan construction. So knitting in the like knitting rows, not knitting in the round. Jeez. And um, making buttonholes and doing the broken rib all over, which I love as a texture very much. And I think it's also very on trend right now. Um, but yeah, I, there were so many things that I, when I finished it and I knew I would love the end result and then it, it just wasn't looking the way I hoped it was, hoped it would, I was like, I need to die now. I don't know if you're also like that or if you can relate to me sometimes being a bit more of an impulsive person or like wanting to do things like then and there. I'm like that sometimes and so I did and the the reason why I shouldn't probably shouldn't have done it is now the texture is quite dry it does actually feel a bit more like linen than it does like silk it didn't ruin the garment like I'm happy to say I've worn this a couple of times I like wearing it and I like the finished results I don't love it just because I've knitted with silk, I paid the price for the silk, and now I did kind of mess the fabric up by over dyeing it. A friend of mine actually suggested putting this thing in some like conditioner water and giving it back some of the silkiness, silky feelingness. I haven't washed this again after washing it after dyeing it, so I had to wash it after dyeing again. Um, but like I said, I've applied the I've applied the buttons. I'm going to insert another picture of me wearing it so you can maybe see it a bit more easily. Like I said, in the end, this is more of like a three out of five stars project for me, just because of the how long it took, how intense it was, the mistakes I made, the things that I got frustrated with, and the end result being okay. Um, being yeah, it's nice, but it also with the, with the color, it has its downsides. Um, it did actually work quite well. You can still see the shadow of the two different dialogue, I think, in some light, but in others, it's not too visible. I'm actually quite interested to see how it looks in the camera when I'm going to edit this later on. Um, so yeah, I don't know um, how this, in the end, how often I'm going to wear it, but I hope I've said everything about this. I mean, by this point, you're tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of speaking about it. I'm just gonna wear it as much as I want to this summer. And I've learned my lessons. So many lessons to be learned from this. Um, dying yarn is no joke. Like I have so much more respect, not that I didn't have any respect before, but like I have a lot of new respect for yarn dye is like um, people that actually do this and get creative with colors because there is so much to know about like the chemics of like behind it and the, the acid dyes and the salt dyes and which fabric or which kind of like <laughs> yarn will take which dye and which is going to be ruined from it and so on. But yeah, that's enough on what I'm wearing. That's a very long intro. It's actually Sunday, the 11th of June. It's around, it's about to turn 12, like midday. It's been quite warm here. Um, and I was really looking forward to finish, to film this episode. So I hope you got cozy, have something to drink. I have an iced coffee and um you're here for the ride because this is going to be a long episode like let's not kid ourselves mm. but moving on i'm going to put my the thing i'm working on at the moment away i'm going to talk about it later the next thing that i finished are these broken rope socks by Samalee knits They are from the Hello Sailor collection and they're made in eggnog and caramel. The colorways are from Olivia and Oliver Fibers. Um, I've made a sweater in this colorway, but I bought the sock set as well. 
And uh, I, when I saw that, it's, I thought it was such a clever way to incorporate some contrasting color into a sock without putting just maybe two stripes up here or maybe doing just the, the cuff or the, uh, the heel and the, um, the toe. And that color, although I love that, and I'm like, really had some great sock energy going. So this is broken rib and it has those like um, contrast accent colors. I'm going to show you the inside of the sock just to show you how I carried the um, yarn. Um, this was actually quite easy to do. I think it's a great practice to hold your floats like this in a, in a striped sock just to try it out for maybe some upcoming color work projects. I've done this with one of the stripey colors in my Brighton team recently. And so I think I'm just like getting more comfortable with some techniques I'm learning through this. And yeah, I really like these socks. It's not exactly knitted sock weather, although I'm like up until around like 20 degrees, I'm still wearing them when I wear sneakers. But I've been wearing my burden socks most days just because it's very comfortable. I like my feet to be out, uh, get some air. I don't, what am I even saying? I love these socks. I think they're really cute. Um, they're really on brand, on theme with a stripey, like summery season. More on that later. I have a special announcement at the end. <laughs> I'm not good at, at this, so we'll see. Um, yeah, but I have a special announcement at the end. But before that, I'm going to show you my third finished object, which is the Vanilla Ripped Socks by the Crazy Sock Lady. I've still got one on the blocker and one it's already blocked and finished. So these uh, are just the usual Vanilla Sock recipe by the Crazy Sock Lady. Now that I've knitted a couple of sock pairs, I do know a lot of the like just things by heart, but I've also always put them in my Ravelry pages, just like how many stitches or rows I, I did for the leg and the, and the foot. Um, I sometimes do still have to look into the pattern if I'm not sure about something with the heel and like the more I knit socks, the less I need to look into the pattern. But if I haven't knit socks for some times, I do need to go back in there sometimes. And actually I've done, made such a stupid mistake with the broken rope socks. I did the heel flap and then I just moved on to the decreases. I completely forgot about the heel um, turn. I like the thing where you decrease before you then decrease some more. And it just looked so weird. So that was a, a very nice lesson about why socks are con constructed that way. And this is also my favorite construction. My first uh, ever knitted pair of socks, I made kind of like, I think it was a short row heel or boomerang um, heel. I think it's called in German, it's boomerang ferse. And I still, I, I've just put them in the washing machine for the first time. I'm usually hand washing my socks just because whenever I block something, like I have a finished object, I block it, I then take it out of the water like 20, 30, 60 minutes later, depending on how long I like to soak it or whether I forget about it, and then block it, put it out. I usually reuse the water. I just put in some socks, a bit more, maybe a bit more water, a bit more soap wash, um, wool wash, not soap wash, a bit more soap. And then I just leave them in there for some time, um, rinse them out, and then I've got my socks like fresh and clean again. And just leave them to dry. I don't re-block them usually on these. Um, these are particularly uh, helpful, I think, with stuff like two by two ribbing. Um, all the details for this are also linked on the Ravelry page, which I've now come to like just link the Ravelry project page uh, beside all of the information I put in the description box so you don't have to l look through my Ravelry to find them. You can just click the individual project, which I find really helpful. Um, and these were highly inspired by Kay um, from the Crazy Sock Lady who 
also made some in a really beautiful like confetti colorway and I just wanted to make some for a special someone and so I can probably say who they are for because I don't think she's watching all of my videos but she's very proud of me thank you mom um I'm, I'm pretty sure she's not watching all of these videos yeah okay so these are for my mom these are for her birthday I'm really happy to get getting like gifts done early this year just because I'm trying to keep ahead with all of the gift knitting and I'm recently been in kind of like a gift knitting and gift planning mood um, and yeah these are the little bloom yarn prairie base which is a 75 superwash merino and 25 polymize yarn and the price for this yarn like this dyer she's from germany i bought this from her etsy shop i had it on my yarn board for such a long time because i adored the look of the skein and i do also love the way it turned out in the sock this um colorway she doesn't have it in her shop at the moment but i she might bring it back i don't know it's called golden fields and that's just perfect um this reminded me of uh the sun um, and sunflowers which remind me of my mom um, and bees and I don't like she's such a summer spirit I don't know she's such a warm person and so these will be for my mom for her birthday and I can't wait to give them to her because she has no idea so this was my third finished object I'm going to move on to another, to a not so successful knitting project journey, but there's so much learning to be done, right? So let me first tell you about the project and the yarn, and then let me tell you about where, where the problem lies with this. So the, the pattern is not the problem. This is the Tulsa Tea by Rebecca Klo from the Crea Bea uh, Knitting Podcast and Knitting Design. Um, decider and this is a Noro silk garden so first of all about the construction I had about 250 grams so five skeins of the Noro which was about 75 euros if I'm not mistaken yeah they were 15 euros a skein which that is more than I would usually pay for a t-shirt. I was just very adamant to knit with Noro. And I thought a t-shirt would be less than a whole sweater. Um, and I wanted to, I don't know, like the idea, it just came into my mind. I thought it was so clever and doing something special with this Tulsa tea, which is a pattern that just calls for you being creative with it and just making it your own and uh, I did have to crop the whole thing pretty drastically like 10 centimeters at least um, because I ran out of yarn I played some uh, serious game of, game of yarn chicken um, and the the length is actually okay if you're like wearing a, ha uh, a high um, skirt or high um, waisted shorts or uh, high-waisted jeans that should be fine I did do the modification of casting on a couple less stitches in the beginning because the neck is quite wide which I don't love in a crew neck t-shirt or crew neck sweater um, that is something that Rebecca herself suggested doing and it's also in the uh, like if you buy the pattern you get two PDFs which one is just the regular pattern um, which I think is really nice, like being able to uh, measure yourself in a couple of areas in your upper body and then being able to choose a size. I picked size three for this, uh, which should have given me a quite well-fitting, uh, not oversized look. Uh, for my measurements, I'm, uh, I've started to put my measurements at the end of the description box so you can see and maybe compare if you want to compare yourself regarding like you knitting a pattern and then choosing a size this would give me um, 
just a very little amount of positive ease and be very fitted, which I thought would be a great look to try out because I usually knit stuff with um, a lot of uh, positive ease, which I more so enjoy. But this did still turn out really wide. Um, apart from that, I knitted everything according to the pattern, um, the short rows, everything. And like I said, the pattern is not the problem. The problem is the yarn. This Norris Lit Garden is kind of like a thick and thin, very much, it's not like hand spun, but it has a, a texture where you can, where it's sometimes it's more like worsted iron weight, and then it's more like DK, and it's just thick and thin. And the the colors are from like ranging from a taupey, beigey, um, grayish colorway to kind of like, uh, orangey brownish um, stripes which when I swatched this I didn't see that happening and it's not like I don't like how it looks but I don't it just doesn't feel like something that would fit into my wardrobe which is a shame because that yarn costs a lot of money uh, it didn't take a lot of time the project I had knitted in like three days <laughs> uh, because probably because of the gauge but I just realized the yarn with its like silk mohair component, the thickness of the yarn and also a bit of like the prickliness in the yarn, it's just not suitable for a summer garment for me. So I thought, I, I have so many notes on this and I'm just like saying whatever comes to mind now, but um, I thought and I heard some people um, repurposing yarn, even from like finished garments. And I just want to give this yarn another chance, maybe with someone else, because I'm sometimes, I feel like if I've knitted with this yarn before, I don't know if I feel, if I feel like going back in with this yarn and doing something else with it. Um, my friend Chelsea, she's planning on doing this like new petite knit bag, which I, Think it's such a beautiful plan and I think this might even be a suitable um, a suitable yarn for that so maybe someone might want to make a bag with this I also thought it could be a great pillowcase uh, or like I said if someone wants to try and see if this like t-shirt more like thick t-shirt suits them me <laughs> trying to get to the point I will do a D sash just a I think three yarns, sweater quantities, in my Instagram later tonight. I hope to be uploading this on the Sunday, on the day that I'm filming it, at the end of the day. And then I'm going to put it up and put up the Instagram posts about the D-stash. It's just yarn that I'm not looking forward to knit with anymore as much as I did when I bought it, obviously. And I do have uh, a sizable stash or like I'm very comfortable with my stash but I know that I'm going to do some stash enhancement this summer and so I thought like I said this was such a pricey pro uh, project and if I could like give this to someone else get some of the money back <laughs> to buy some more yarn with um, and give someone else the opportunity to knit with it or even wear this if they don't mind the um, thickness of the yarn um, in the summer or even style it in a different way you could also because you can always like wear it uh, over some um, long sleeve things or even uh, lengthen it and just like repurpose the yarn so I'm, I don't know if anyone's into this idea but I'm um, I'm posting those D stash yarns the other yarn will be a Olivia and Oliver um, surrey that I got it's three skeins of the feather color, which in theory, I love that colorway. I gave one of the fingering weights to Chelsea in our, um, in our, what's it called? Gift yarn swap. And I bought, I just recently put up another order with uh, Olivia and Oliver and I bought the DK weight sock set. And I think for socks or for, I think she's planning on knitting a, a top with it i like the the yarn but i'm just like over here planning my knits for this year and i'm just realizing i have too many plans 
And with this yarn, I didn't have any plants that I was like super looking forward to knit with. And actually the pinks, I mean not pinks, but like rosé colors in the yarn were more um, obvious than I thought when I saw the pictures online. Like I said, I'm doing the D stash over on my Instagram. So if you're wanting to grab some yarns for less than I paid for them originally and help me D stash, that would be nice. The next thing that I'm not planning to make anymore is sweater number is cardigan number seven, which I plan to make in a black um, with the drops air and drops um, kid mohair. And so I'm selling this like package of air and drops mohair to be made into a sweater or cardigan um, anywhere from like size medium to extra large, I think should be suitable for the amount of yarn that I have. And so maybe someone wants to either um, buy any of those yarns or even buy this project uh, as it is or repurpose and um, repurpose the yarn from it. Um, so I don't know if uh, anyone is interested in that or if it's even going to work like that. I've never done a de-stash before. That should be it. That should be it for finished objects. Also talking about this, um, like I said, Sometimes we, we lose some, we win some. I won't always be happy with everything that I'm making. That's just the, the risk that I'm taking if I'm not always doing the same thing, which I don't want to do. And um, I think Hila said that in her last, in her recent, most recent video that she doesn't mind if someone doesn't fit her, if she just really enjoys the process of it. And I think that's such a, it's such a beautiful way to look at knitting and at the craft and the art that we're making and I'm just trying to see it that way um, I mean it can get frustrating if you're I mean you're putting money and time into it and um, you wish for it to fit and for you to be able to wear it but if that's not the case I'm trying to just let go I like I don't feel any negative things about that I'm I still think it's a beautiful yarn I'm very happy to have knitted with it, it was, great experience to like see the colors coming in when I was knitting on it but it's just something that made me learn stuff right I'm probably not gonna make any more summer stuff in on such a big gauge and um, it's really important for me to use summer yarns and try them out and like just get creative with that and also it's 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 not a problem if something doesn't work out and maybe someone else will be happy to repurpose the yarn. But yeah, stopping myself here. Um, I will be talking about my four whips, um, my works in progress. First of all, um, I'm working on a test knit. I've promised myself this is the last test knit for some time. I mean, they're they were so much fun. They also were a huge learning um, experience, a learning curve for me this um, spring. But now that it is the summer, I have a lot of things going on. Um, I just want to work on stuff that I that I want to work on just because I want to work on them. And it's not like I didn't want to work on these um, on these test knits but I also think I might just not knit as much in the summer and um, yeah I'm just I think for now I've test knitted enough but because this test knit is still going on I still need to finish this and then I do have so many other plans that I think I'm going to take a break on test knitting for some time and this is probably the most intricate of them all <laughs> and this is also taking the longest time um, I'm just going to show you the back panel because that's most of what I got I've just started picking up stitches and doing some um, actually does is this correct no <laughs> now that I'm looking at it no now that I'm looking at it it's not correct this piece needs to go here, but that's okay. I can rip that out pretty easily. Yeah, so 
I've made another mistake. Knitting on 2.5 millimeter needles is no joke, you guys. I've made one mistake where I, for some reason, uh, one of the yarns um, snapped. The, this one especially is quite prone to snapping. Um, and so I knitted a couple of rows just with the one yarn and I didn't realize. And then uh, for some reason, I kind of joined back in the second yarn and was knitting and knitting and knitting for seven centimeters before I realized, and I didn't want to realize, obviously, because I mean, I could see it, that there was like kind of like a shadow because the thinner yarn is making the whole thing a bit more saturated in color. I mean, it's still pretty much white or like grayish, beigey color, um, but this is a lot lighter than that. And so I was able for, first of all, to see in color that there was kind of like a stripe going on, which, I mean, is on brand for me, right? Stripes and mistakes kind of like go along. They're like, yes. Um, and also there was a textural difference. Uh, it was doing kind of like a thing, which I don't know. So I had to rip back over seven centimeters of knitted stockinette in a row on 2.5 millimeter needles, which was like, ah. And now I've realized I made another mistake. It told me to pick up stitches uh, and I realized I should have picked up the stitches here and not here. I need to really focus on this and that's what's kind of been keeping me from it. It's not the design. It's not the test knitting process. The designer is lovely. The other test knitters are so lovely. The yarn is, really nice and interesting to work with. Although I have to say, uh, the cones are cuter than they are practical. Because I always have to put them somewhere. I usually put them on the ground. Maybe when I'm sitting at my, in my chair or in my, like on my bed. And they always, they often just fall down like, and then I do have to prop them up again. I do have kind of like a little spinning thingy where I can put it on, but still I don't have two and I need to work with those two yarns. So sometimes it gets a bit tangled and a bit more difficult uh, in comparison to just like using a skein of yarn that can then like flop around the room for all I care. I, I don't really care. Or I do have it in my like knitting bag and then like just feed from that, which yeah. These are the Endling everyday kit. I did get a 20% discount for it uh, through the testing process. So I did pay for it myself, but I got a small discount, which this still costs me. I do have another cone of this one. This was the set. It still costs me over 60 euros with shipping. So it's still a, I would say more luxury knit. Uh, but that's really fitting, I think, for like the polo uh, neck project. So this needs to be my needs to be my focus project, especially because I don't have the time next week. I'll be out of uh, the country. I'll be at a conference in the UK next week, and uh, so I won't be taking that just because of the cones and the way in which I need to focus on that. I wanted to take something for the flight which is only like an hour to like to go from Frankfurt to London. So I don't really need a big project, but I want to be knitting on the plane. It's just like, I have my heart set on it. I don't want to do it. Because at the conference, at the last conference that I went to, I was able to do some really easy plain like stockinette in the round knitting while listening. I'm able to do that while not like looking at it. I can read and knit or I can go to the cinema and knit, but it needs to be stuck in it in the round. I can do some like rib ribbing without looking, but I shouldn't be like complete darkness. I need to sometimes just like, but mostly I'm, I'm watching or seeing with my hands. That is mostly enough for me to, to go on with it. So this is the Marco Polo. Like I said, I didn't say, right? It's Paina Bita, who's the Crea Dia Studio. Uh, or the designer behind Creative Studio. And um, I'm very interesting to see how it will look, the finished garment, I need to focus on it, like I said. But it's been quite um, 
quite a project on 2.5 millimeter needles. And so my next project, uh, I actually got some progress on lately, is the Corn Cardigan by Rebecca Klo again. Um, I remember I recently said that I need to start knitting some of her projects because I, I think they're all lovely, but I haven't ever made any of, that, any of those. Um, and so I started doing the Corn Cardigan in the Wool Dreamers Mota. This is the colorway 246 and it's a lovely terracotta red. It's so fun to knit with, but also I'm always picking out those like hay or straw or whatever this is, like little pieces off of it, which just kind of makes it feel more like naturey, like natural. I don't know if you're able to see that, but yeah, it's kind of like hay in there. Um, and I've come as far as only having to add the sleeves and the kind of like button band to it. Um, I'm so chuffed with this. Like at the beginning, I was quite afraid by the like difficulties I could run in with the lace pattern. And I did make some mistakes in the beginning because of the, and I had the same exact problem with another uh, project that I made um, where it had kind of like a, a structure, a pattern within it. Um, just learning how to knit in pattern whenever there's decreases or increases. I just, that's something that I still have to learn. It's something you need to practice. You need to find uh, a way of seeing that, like reading your knitting is a lot more difficult in like lace or uh, structural sh structured knitting than it is in stockinette or ribbing, obviously. And one thing I'm actually extremely proud of is the way in which I seamed this. Um, these uh, The technique, I don't know if I'm able to say that or if I'm, I'm allowed to say that, but it's a new technique that I've done, that I've done, that I've done. And it looks like this on the inside. It's kind of like uh, you do both panels, you do bind offs at the same time while also joining. I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? But I'm not going to say the technique. I'm just, I don't know the etiquette on that, but um, there was a very great, helpful tutorial on, that, tutorial on that. And I would love to share it, but I feel like you shouldn't be giving too many informations about paid for patterns. But yeah, if you have this pattern and you are stuck at that point, just type in to YouTube the technique you're supposed to use and there are um, there's a great um, there's a great tutorial for that by her name is like pink something I think she's like one of the OGs of like doing knitting tutorials and I totally don't know her name I'm sorry um, but yeah this is the Korean cardigan I don't know it's like something completely different from what I would usually make I love the color I'm excited to see how it fits. It's quite tight. I think I'm also making size three, which in most patterns I would knit a size four, but with Rebecca, I feel like um, with the recommended ease and like everything, I'm always really much, like pretty much in between size three and four. And so I just hope this um, blocks out a bit and the, the adding the button band and the sleeves will help give it a bit more room. But I did plan for it to be kind of more like a fitted uh, cardigan because of the lace motif. I just thought that was the look to go for. Although there is from Simone, who's breast knitwear, there's the Aria cardigan she recently brought out. And that is like a completely different style. It's very oversized. It doesn't have any buttons and it's, it's intended to look that way, right? And for, with this, I feel like it's intended to be buttoned up. And of course, I'm like going off of the pictures that Rebecca also shared, and I, I like how she styled it. So I'm trying to um, go that route as well. So yeah, I'm pretty proud of my progress on this, but it's going to need to take um, kind of like a back seat um, for as long as I am going to uh, be focusing on the Marco Polo. 
But that's not enough. I had some, I know so many people call it like crazy cast on energy, but I just felt like very calm cast on energy. I was like, I have this very intricate 2.5 millimeter knit that is really challenging, but also interesting. I have this like interesting, but more like autumnal lace cardigan, which can take like, which I can take all my time with. I don't have like any rush to get it finished. And then I finished my sock and I didn't have like a third easy on the go knitting thing anymore. And I needed that for like on the plane, on the tube, on the train, in the evenings, in the hotel, throughout like the conference week. And so I didn't cast on one, but I cast it on two projects. And the first one is actually not so mindless after all, but I think it's something rhythmic. Rhythmic? Is that the right word? It's the Barbara Shaw by Gregoria Fibers. And this is, this is how far I've come. Um, I really enjoy the look of it. I do need to look at the pattern sequence at like the um, knit one, pearl one, like that kind of like written out all of the rows, but also every other row is kind of like same-ish. And so I'm getting into a rhythm. I've just watched most of the newest season of Setting Sunset while knitting on this. And so I just glare at my phone every now and again to see if I'm on the right like row. And then I have, uh, I, I'm using my um, books app on my iPhone to look at my uh, patterns, but I do want to get an iPad for that, to be quite honest, it's just so expensive. But yeah. Um, and then I can just like highlight whatever I've done before to like keep track of it. And like I said, it's not like stuck in, a, in the round, but it's actually quite nice. It's actually quite nice to have more of like an engaging knit like that, but also something that is really easy to like just carry around. I'm going to take another maybe skein of that or even just like keep it at that. I'm going to maybe um, take off the needles and put them in like my, I'm taking some pens for the conference, obviously. So I'm going to put them in my hand luggage and just screw on the like stopper needle stoppers here. And then I'm just going to hope for the best because these are um, wooden needles. And so this is going to be my um, airplane knitting project. The color is Prunella, no, the The yarn is Pernilla by Fulcolana and the color is Chai. And I like the way in which she um, knitted hers in kind of like a very dark melange brown. Um, but that one was sold out. And I wanted to work with Chai for a long time. I just really adore the colorway and I just thought I mean, yeah, it's also very tonal when it comes to my coloring and my like skin color and hair color, but also I love it. And so this is the color I went for. Um, and I will also probably make a small one of that for my aunt because my mom, my grandma and my other aunt, they got um, Sophie scarves last year for Christmas and I wanted to make uh, a scarf for my aunt as well because I'm knitting all of her children which she now has three um, projects or like objects this year and so I just thought that she also very much deserved to get something and uh, I've shown you the bonnet that I made for my smallest cousin and I'm also planning on making a baby Aosta um, sweater for her that is a construction that has like um, buttons going along here which I adore for babies. Um, I'm gifting my the the biggest one of the three my cousin she's getting my lento which turned out too small and I think she'll 
love. It's going to be a bit big on her. I just recently, when I saw the three, I just took out my measuring band, and, like measured them, and they were so excited. They're like, I'm getting a handmade sweater band, see Marlene. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I can make that. And um, so because I already have the two projects for my um, cousins um, and the third cousin, um, he's six, and I wanted to make him something. Um, and so I modified a pattern by Petite Net. It's called the Rigmore's Summer Blouse, and it's actually a baby to like five to six year old um, pattern. And from his me measurements, the biggest size should fit him quite well. They're all all quite um, petite. And so um, I'm not making the lace motif that the pattern suggests, but I'm just taking the measurements and the stitch counts and like the a bottom-up construction raglan to make a t-shirt for him. And so this is the beginning of the t-shirt. I'm using Drops Bell. This is yarn that I bought for a possible second Farnham tea version. And then I just realized that white with navy blue stripes was kind of like my my uniform when I was like 16 years old. I had everything in like white and blue stripes. My bikinis were all H&M, white and blue stripes. I was like a sailor girl phase in my life. So I don't know, but I don't think that the like very stark white still has a, like this combination doesn't fit my wardrobe as much anymore. So when I got it, and I, I think the, the Farnham tea in this combination would look gorgeous, but with all the other more like warm, it's not like it needs to be warm tones, but it's like oranges and yellows and beiges and grays and, and like black, no, not even black. I just, this doesn't, like in comparison to everything else that I'm making, this just didn't felt like something that I would want to make for myself. But then I was like, this is a perfect color combination for my little cousin and I think he would love it and I think he would look so cute in it and so like I said I make I'm making the biggest size I'm just using the stitch counts and like the I still I just needed a raglan t-shirt construction for a child that size and I had the pattern and so I'm using it which I, I'm I, I think it's so like exciting to be able to just modify patterns like that. So this is going to look nothing like the Rigmore's Summer Flowers is intended to look like, but it's, I think it's going to be a great t-shirt for, like I said, my little cousin. And I'm going to take this as well, just because it's like the easy knitting in the round. I'm doing two, four, six, eight rows of white and then two rows of the navy color. And so I'm, it's, pretty easy like in the round stockinette, stockinette, stockinette knitting where I don't need to look I'm like go just going off and every like eight rows I need to change color which is also pretty easy I'm not holding the floats I just found with um, the like cotton viscose uh, linen blend that the bell is and I really enjoy working with this yarn actually it's a bit dry but like overall um, I just really enjoyed wear, wearing my Farnham tee as well in that drop spell that I made. And I think it's one of the nicest summer yarns that I've worked with so far. And I haven't worked with many, but I'm planning to, and I really recommend it for like the price that it is. Um, I think it's really great. And so that is going to be my second project. It's also on um, bamboo or wooden needles but they're fixed circulars. They are the C-knit. I have two C-knit, so size three millimeters and three and a half. And that is just going to be a project that I keep in my luggage and then just might be able to just work on a bit at the conference if there's ever any break time. Or like I said, I don't mind um, if no one minds me, like I'm very much able to listen very concentrated if I'm just doing sucking it in the round so 
like I said, last conference, no one took any offense in me sitting there knitting. I mean, it's not like it's making any noises. I mean, it is a bit, but if someone's speaking, I mean, I will be taking it and then assessing the situation when I'm there, but also I will be having like two, three hours in the uh, at night before I will be able to go to sleep in the hotel. So I thought the risk of just taking one project was too but like too big. I always like I would always take two projects just because maybe I don't feel like knitting on the one, but I'm going for the other. But also just taking two projects will ensure that I'm probably hopefully going to make some progress on them. And I also wanted to take one because I'll be in Brighton for the like Tuesday till Friday for the conference. And then I'm going to be in London sun Saturday and Sunday just like for like pri private. It's not part of the um, work trip, but I'm able to like put it in the end of my work trip and then flying back out on the Sunday. I'm actually going to meet up with Valentina, who I've been talking to online and on Instagram so much. And she's the owner of uh, my ivory broom. And we've been connected before she announced that. But now that she announced that and we we're talking about like the dream of having a yarn store and live vicariously through her. Um, no, we've just um, become internet friends and now we're meeting and having like grabbing some lunch I'll see the shop and like drive up to um Chiswick Chiswick yeah I'm going to see her shop and I'm really looking forward to that um so that's what I'm going to do um I will see if I have any time to visit some more yarn stores but I also want to go to my favorite museum and uh, go to my favorite like lunch places and bookstores and so um, yeah, it's not just going to be yarn shopping, um, because let's be honest, I don't really need anything. Mm. And I've actually just ordered some more yarn with Chelsea to be shipped to her place, the Sorella Oopsies, which we are planning on, like, opening up at the same time in a couple of weeks when I'm there, and then just, like, swapping and, like, making something beautiful with it. We have plans on knitting so many things. It's not going to be like humanly possible to make them all. Um, yeah, <laughs> but that's, that's on planning. I'm planning on knitting something that is like right beside me. When um, Kutuba Kika came out or like announced her stripe hype sweater, I was in awe of like the playfulness and like the look and being able to knit from stash and like the the twisted rib and like the colorful details i just love the look of that and then kahila uh, made her version in just two colors and i loved that like that was looking so nice and i had this yarn sitting around it was actually planned to be a to be a festival sweater which I love the look of and was majorly inspired by Chelsea but I also had it like sitting around for such a long time and never really casting it on I did swatch for it but I've never come came to the point where I was like let's cast it on and so I just like listened like I just talked to myself like being really like do I really want to cast that on and then I came to the conclusion I didn't, but I didn't want to like obviously waste the yarn and I was thinking about what to make with it. And so I think um, like these four colors were originally planned to be the festival sweater. This is hot cocoa and pumpkin spice and uh, almond. These are from Olivia and Oliver and this is from Sandness Garn. And I did also have some of the Sunday, um, which is the fingering weight uh, in the grey olive colour, um, which I made the stripes of my Brighton tea with, and I had originally planned to make something else with this, but I'm not doing that anymore, and so I'm going to hold that double to make the stripes for the sleeves. I'm going to do um, pretty much like inspired by her way of striping them, I'm going to do this first uh, closest to the neck. And I'm going to go in with the 
cocoa and then I've ordered some terracotta yarn which was the reason why I, I ordered from Olivia and Oliver uh, and whenever I do that I'm like talking to my friend uh, Lydia if she wants something and then we basically enable each other to buy more yarn that we could ever work with but but because now that we both enjoy sock knitting so much, I mean, there's always a reason to order from Olivia and Oliver. So yeah, I ordered one skein of DK weight of the terracotta and that's going to be the third um, like rows of stripes in uh, the belly region. And I'm not planning on doing two colors, two colors, two stripe colors on the sleeves, just because I haven't found any uh, fifth like color that I want to do it with I mean I'm going to knit the whole thing and if I'm like here like just having to knit the rest of the sleeves and I find like by some magical in like accident find another color that like completely fits with it I'm going to use that but if that doesn't happen that's also okay and I'm really very much looking forward to that and I have one acquisition actually. Let me get it. So I didn't actually buy any yarn since I last spoke to you guys, which like I said, it's like a three, four weeks ago, which I mean, it's, it's kind of a lie because I, I ordered some yarn to be delivered to Chelsea's house. And I'm going to, like when I'm going to get there in like six weeks or whatever, how many more days it is it's like i'm acting so casual it's not like i do have this like countdown on my phone like telling me how many days it is but yeah um when i'm getting there there is going to be so much yarn waiting for me i did order from the uh one collection to rule them all like a lot of the rings collection from long dog yarn i was gonna say long dong yarn which i'm not the only one doing that <laughs> Um, we did order from Sorella together and I did order from Pearl Soho for two upcoming projects. So there is some yarn waiting there for me and we're going to do so much yarn shopping. So I need to pace myself before going there, obviously. And um, I only bought some sock yarn and the DK weight that I need for that sweater from Olivia and Oliver. So I feel okay with that. But I did get some yarn gifted by my friend Lydia who just recently went to Iceland for a trip and she brought to me or back for me some Petulupi which I always wanted to work with some unspun yarn. These are two plates of the like white beigey colorway. I actually want to like get them out of this but I think this is the best way of keeping them until I work with them actually. Um, and yeah, like I said, I wanted to work with the Manchalopes from Wool Dreamers before. Um, I think I mentioned that last last year in one of my like what cardigans I want to make video. And that would be for the Traveler's Cardigan by Ozetta. And that is still a plan, but it's just not very much on top of my mind right now because of the weather. It's like 30 degrees out there. I'm not looking forward to make something like a thick and woolly cardigan, right? And so we're planning on making a um, Aosta pillow with this. Uh, that's a pattern by, I'm going to put it away. I feel like the queen thing is going to be so loud. Uh, it's a pattern again by Sophie, the knit pearl girl. And uh, when I just recently tested it for her for my favorite Farnham tea. Um, she gave me like, or gave the testers some crazy amount of like, thank you patterns. Like I was able to choose, I think four or five patterns from her pattern collection. So I, I now own so many of the Aosta um, patterns, which I love them. I love the look of them, especially the kids stuff. And this pillow is something that we're planning on making together this winter. And we are also planning on making kind of like a make-along for that. But that 
is going to be like in the future. I know there are so many plans that I've already spoken about for the winter, but to get to the fun announcement that I wanted to make that is actually relevant this month, we are making a Summer Stripes Cal, which is starting at the um, from the 30th of June. And um, like I said, my friend Lydia, her handle is Lydia Hababa. She has put up some um, podcasts, but hasn't recently. Um, she's more active on um, Instagram. And the cow is also going to run on Instagram. And so, I mean, if you watch my, reg my episodes regularly, you've seen my, like, love for stripes recently and i do also think it's like a design element that is very summery and it's used a lot in summer designs and we both love the idea of doing something like that together and like assembling prizes and getting in contact with some brands that we love and so we do have a couple of very amazing prizes like prize packages they are only going to be available to ship in the EU, unfortunately. But still, everyone is um, invited, like welcome to uh, join this cow. We're going to run it on, like I said, Instagram. The handle is like the hashtag is summer stripes cow. And whips are welcome. Uh, you just need to post and tag the two of us. I'm going to link the um, details and the links on Instagram and you'll find all of the information there. I'm going to post today some of the inspiration that we've found um, after test knitting for Coco More Knitwear and seeing her Portobello sweater being like um, teased uh, a couple of months ago. I was like, I need to make that. I, I showed my friend. She was like, it's amazing. We need to make it. She suggested using a lighter, more summery yarn, uh, which we landed on the Duo, which is the yarn that I wanted to work with for, for such a long time. We were like immediately looking for the colors. I knew I wanted to make something with like orangey, terracotta -y stripes and like a light base. Of course, she had the exact same idea, like great, <laughs> great minds think alike. And it, sometimes we're just so similar with our like aesthetic and the way the things that we like sometimes we're like completely different but that that's the beauty of it right and so we've landed on um on this pattern and the yarn and now she's doing it with the carry which is kind of like an orangey terracotta -y, cinnamony color and the white stripes and i'm doing the white version with the um colored contrast stripes and I think that's going to be such a beautiful project to make. Uh, it's partly sponsored by Kogo More Knitwear, who's also sponsoring some prices. But I'm not going to say too much more. It's going to run for two months, but it's going to run on Instagram. Um, but I'm going to talk about it on here anyway. I hope you join us. Go follow us on Instagram if you want to join later on in the month. Like I said, we still have about two weeks left until it starts and like I also said we have some great prizes lined up and with that I think I've said everything this is a long episode I hope you enjoyed it I hope you um, got some work done on the project that you're working on at the moment um, I always I always love reading about what you're working on so feel free to share in the comments what you're current, currently working on um, if the weather has also been nice where you live and summery and also if you're planning on joining our Cal, I'd be so interested to see um, the responses on Instagram have been so great and like positive and people like saying they want to join in friends and people that we know like from Instagram or people we haven't spoken before uh, to before and so I'm really looking forward to that. My other plans still stand i want to make the cumulus flowers and the cumulus tea in this like slate black color i want to make my cinnamony um camisole number seven i've actually got some i mean i said i i did order something from sanders garden because soul wool the web shop they now have sanders garden and i wanted to get some of the like 
magazine magazines like pattern book booklets from them for such a long time because Inga from the Dink tradition she always talks about them and some of the patterns that she's also made with unspun is also something that I want to try out and so I've ordered uh, one quantity of Line from Sadness Garden to make a an anchors summer blouse with it it's just something such a classic t-shirt design and yeah I mean like I said most of my plants are still standing I'm trying to be more like nitty natty and like writing them all down but also I'm not trying to restrict myself too much I'm going with the flow like I said with a calm cast on energy and just like yeah knitting whatever sparks joy and also the things that I need to finish um but yeah let me wrap that up another time. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, and I always feel awkward saying that or asking for it, but please give this video a thumbs up if you did. I hope you have a great week and I hope to speak to you again soon. Um, the next video will probably take about two or three weeks again, but I might hope to come to a more regular schedule uh, in a couple of months, hopefully. Okay. Bye.